Hello, my name is Dr. Maria Lauer Frommer, and uh, I am the uh, family nurse practitioner and postmaster certificate uh, program chair here at Herzing. And I wanted to take some time to introduce you to uh, the NU 623 Adult Healthcare course. A little bit about myself. I um, am a board certified family nurse practitioner through ANCC. I'm also a certified nurse educator with the National League for Nursing. In 2011, I received uh, my PhD, um, and then in 2015, I earned a DNP from Duke University, in which I received an 85% scholarship for. Anyway, I'm um, really excited about the adult health care course, uh, A, because I think that uh, you have already done at least one clinical by this point. Most people do the 609 course, and then they go into the 623 course, or depending on your schedule, you have a little bit of flexibility with peds and, uh, or women's health, and then the adult health care course. So this is just a short presentation. I just would like to um, do an overview of the course syllabus, some of the grading activities, how to get the grade that you want in the course, which I hope you want an A, um, the clinical requirements, the course requirements. This is a clinical course that has a course component as well, so I'll, I'll show you that, and also um, just uh, who to contact if you need help. So. <clears throat> Let's start with uh, 623. So the first clinicals that most people usually do is 609 first. That's the first clinical course, and then there's 623. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do it, if you don't do it in that exact order as far as if you decide to go to peds first or women's health, but most people do do it this way. Anyway, the uh, this is 135 clinical hours. You should be in a primary care type of setting. Those types of settings include family practices, community clinics, uh, some of the retail health clinics that service all uh, age populations, um, urgent care clinics that do primary care and urgent care. Um, our pop uh, population focus is ages 18 to 65. Um, or 18 to 64, and then at 65, your geriatric course picks up. So um, you're only, um, if you're in a setting, let's just say a family setting, urgent care with a primary care or retail health clinic, you you may be seeing all ages, but only the hours that, that uh, are with this population, ages 18 to 64, are going to count towards your clinical hours. Okay, next we'll go to the syllabus, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Now, um, pretty much standard, you're going to see your faculty's contact information here. You're also going to see it in the course under faculty information, their preferred um, method for contact, as well as um, some office hours there. In this case, you're looking at the course author um, and one of the course instructors, Dr. Suzanne uh, Weinzenberg, uh, who is board certified family nurse practitioner and also has a DMP. So uh, the other um, individual that we have teaching this course is Dr. Uh, Deborah Blanson, who is also a nurse practitioner out of Louisiana and has been with Herzing for quite some time. So you're in really great hands here. So let's uh, let's just uh, scroll down and just take a look at a few components I'd like to pull out for you, um, particularly. Okay, so the course description actually it is ages 18 to 64 up to the age of 65, basically. Um, this is four credit semester hours. As I said, 135 clinical hours, 15 uh, lecture hours uh, in your course. Okay, uh, it's a 16-week course, and um, by now you should have uh, done at least all of these prerequisites here, including the 609 course. Your um, learning objectives, there's 10 of them. They're geared towards you getting a uh, comprehensive uh, review of what you need, um, basically, in the adult health care course in order for you to be a well-rounded family nurse practitioner. 
Your program learning outcomes, that's when you graduate, you should be able to um, meet all five of these program learning outcomes and surely you will um, by the time you graduate HERSING. Um, your required textbooks, they're listed here uh, in the uh, syllabus and they're also listed in your readings and in the classroom as well. Um, we put the APA book here just um, as an optional textbook, but certainly you're required to quote in APA and your textbook link, uh, I'm sorry, you're um, here, this is already um, in APA, so um, it's good to know for when you're um, quoting discussion boards. Okay, so here we are. Um, now this is your weekly um your weekly outline, if you will. Um, it's in the syllabus, tells you when things are due. Um, but we, I'm not going to um, stand here and read this to you. I'm going to expect that you'll go through this, print out the syllabus, and uh, really take a look at what is required of you. I'd like to spend our time together uh, going over the grading criteria and how to get the grade that you want in the course. Okay, so basically this is... Um, uh, I'll start here. This graduate nursing um, specialty courses. It's a clinical course, so therefore it's a um, it's a specialty course. Um, you need to get a B or better in order to be successful in the class, or at eighty percent. There are a thousand points in the course, which means that you need to get at least eight hundred of those points. The points are distributed as follows. You have your discussion boards, which are worth two hundred and forty points. You have three diagnostic reasoning papers, which are worth um, 75 points apiece. Your clinical paperwork is worth 200 points. And then your, uh, your, you'll have six quizzes or exams, which will be worth 35 points. And then there is a final exam, which is worth 125 points. Okay, And each of those will be found in the course as well. So next we will actually go right to the course, and I just have to move my little window open here. Okay, so this is one of the sections of the course. I should be able to widen that a little bit. No, I guess I cannot with this particular um, venue. So in the classroom itself, um, as I'm sure you're familiar, you will, um, I'm now going to move this over so that you can see the classroom. Um, you click on the classroom, <coughs> excuse me, and you'll find, you know, um, the distribution on how things are going to go for you, and then also your required readings, and then the presentations that will be for this week, and then also, too, if there are any assignments due. You'll see those there as well. And um, in your syllabus, you'll see that as well. I'll just go to week two because I believe you have an activity that is due. Yeah, so here we have um, quiz one. So you would uh, click on quiz one. And then you would hit begin here. And then the quiz should come up. No, looks like I have a different different view. Sorry. Anyway, so that is the course. Um, you will see that uh, your discussion boards are here. I'm going to leave that particular area. I'm going to go to your discussion boards, and you will see those here as well. So you go right to the discussion boards for your discussion. Um, pay particular attention to what is being asked and also your APA formatting because those are items that will be um, expected of you at this point. Your faculty information, as I said, is here. And your textbook is here as well. Okay, I can't think of anything else that I would want to share with you at this point. I would say that um, 
if you, um, we've talked about who to contact if you're running into uh, problems. Um, here we are here. Let me just move this over. Okay, so the clinical requirements, 135 clinical hours. Oh, so at the midterm, you're going to turn in your clinical verification hours where your uh, preceptor is going to sign for them. You're also going to turn in your, uh, your preceptor is going to evaluate the midterm, and you're going to uh, turn that in. And then at the final, you'll do the same clinical verification, and then also we'll ask that you evaluate both the site and the preceptor. In this course, um, you're going to have several folks that you're working with because it is a clinical course. So you'll have the course faculty, uh, which will be either Dr. Deborah Blanson or Dr. Suzanne Woods Weinsenberg, sorry. And then also, you'll have a clinical faculty that's assigned to you. The clinical faculty's role will be to um, approve and give you feedback on your Typhon. They'll be marking your diagnostic reasoning clinical papers. And then they will also be connecting with you on a weekly basis and also with your preceptor at the beginning, the midterm, and at the final points in the semester or any time in between. Uh, if you're having any uh, problems in the course, um, you know, with any of the grading items or anything that's going wrong in the course, you would contact your course faculty. If it's uh, diagnostic reasoning papers and Typhon, you would contact your clinical faculty. If the clinical faculty, and they'll be introducing themselves to you, if they do not respond to you, I'd like you to reach out to your course faculty. Um, and then if you're having trouble with your course faculty reaching out to you, I would like you to reach out to me. Um, also, other people that may be involved in your educational process here, especially when it comes to clinical courses, would be um, uh, three people at least in, in the clinical arena. And that is the clinical support specialist. That's Tasha Hoople, Ms. Tasha Hoople. She uh, deals with uh, if you want to put in a clinical application. Clinical applications are due for your next course, February 14th. So my Valentines, make sure you get your applications in February 14th. And then also, so for the next semester, you always want to think a semester ahead. So that's Tasha Hoople. Then you have uh, your two regional clinical coordinators. And I'm sure by now, because it's at least your second course, you have Dr. Marissa Grimley. Dr. Marissa Grimley also is the administrator for Typhon. And so if you're having any problems with Typhon and the, and the software and whatnot, she's uh, very versed with that. And then uh, Dr. Sally Weiss. She is uh, also a regional clinical coordinator. She's the chair of nurse educator program, and she um, is the administrator for Castle Branch, which is where you put all your documentation for your attestations and clinical um, paperwork that is needed in order for you to go to clinical. So any issues with that, she'll reach out to you if you have any issues, and then uh, vice versa if you have any issues with Castle Branch, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Weiss. And then we have um, both of your clinical advisors, which is uh, Mr. Tim Boylan and uh, Ms. Megan Germain. So e in either case, um, if you have any, um, you know, schedule changes that you want to make or um, you want to take a look at when you're graduating or how things affect your graduation, uh, or any of our policies and things like that, um, they're always uh, willing to help. Anybody, if you reach out to anybody on our team, they'll know how to direct you if you're not sure who to contact. So, so that's basically it. I wish you a very successful um, semester, and I hope that you enjoy your clinicals and that everything goes nice and smoothly for you this semester. Take care and have a good semester.